Welcome back everyone to uh, the channel. It's been a long time since I've done one of these videos. I'm a bit rusty and a bit nervous to be honest. Uh, now a lot of people are probably wondering where the hell have I been and why I am uploaded anything. And it's quite frankly it's because I've still got this Audi S1 believe it or not in the garage. Uh, I, I don't want to make it too much of a dampener on this video because uh, I'm not all about that. It's all about being positive and carrying on. I haven't done a video or anything really for about eight months, uh, any new projects, and I think it's about time that we get back into it. Like I said, this is gonna be one of the hardest videos I've had to record. It's only because when starting the salvage um, side of things, when repairing cars and, and that, everyone on YouTube makes it look easy. I can certainly tell you, I'll bring it to you exactly as it should be. I'm as honest uh, and an upfront YouTuber and I, I'm learning as I go, same as everyone else. For the people who are starting out though, just wanna, I was just starting to think about doing something I guess. Be very cautious. I've, I've flipped a few projects now over the last two years, two and a half years. If not, I think it might be three actually now. And it doesn't always work out the way you plan it to. I, like I said, I don't want to drone on about how, how being negative and that because I've learned a lot from doing this on my own. Never picked up a spanner in my life uh, to, to, to repairing cars. Totally written off. It's one of them things I've always wanted to do and enjoy it. Yeah, I've even got a garage over my head. People make it look easy flipping cars every week. Uh, I've sold, just for instance, a, a YouTuber, oh, I've repaired a car. I sold this already and they haven't even finished repairing it. You think it's wow, that looks they make it look so easy. Uh, it can can be easy depending if you buy the right projects and you sell them at the right price and buy them at the right price ultimately. Uh, well I've made a mistake over the time period of time. I bought cars and I bought them at quite high. Because obviously the salvage market has shot right up in price so auction cars are just ridiculously priced. Uh, and you just can't seem to grab a bargain anymore. I always seem to buy, I think, oh, that looks good, that car looks good, and I end up buying something that needs a lot more work than first intended. So ideally, if you can't go and look at these cars, you're taking a huge gamble straight away because you can't see what other problems that come with them. I'm stuck at the moment in a bit of a, a bit of a rut because this car, this Audi S1 project, fantastic project, absolutely loved it. Thought I'd sell it instantly. Uh, I listed it in May and I'm still got it listed and it's another car that I'm going to make a loss on not going to make any money on it at all and a loss now it's probably about the third or fourth project that I've done where I haven't made any money on and this one will be a loss again the other Audi A1 which I which I had on the channel a few years uh, a, a while back I had a lot of problems repaired it all looked good but I had a, a lot of problems with the engine afterwards I lost two and a half grand on that car but I still carried on now, every time I'm doing these projects, uh, I'm using my savings to do this. Uh, and obviously, I've got full backing of my wife and everything else, but uh, ultimately, times are hard now. And you can't afford to be wasting money and losing money on projects all the time. Now, some people might agree with me, some people might not. It's, uh, they definitely make it easy to win on YouTube and thinking, and they only show the good things and how easy it is, but definitely it's a lot harder than what people make out. It, like I said, it all goes on the car, what car you buy. Some people just want to do a quick flip and just do the bare minimum out the door. But when you put in a name to a car and you want returning customers say, or you just, you, when, you, when they come into your home address, or, you know, you don't want to be one of these people that sell a car on the side of the street, on the side of the road somewhere. You want people to have faith in, in what you're selling. And these cars, believe it or not, I think, a category car is one of the hardest things to sell because they've got that big stigma behind them that once a cut and shank. They've been in an accident, they've written off, they shouldn't be back on the road and all this, all this rubbish. Now, far from the truth, as long as they've been repaired properly, they're probably safer than most cars you buy on, on, on the marketplace, eBay and things like that because everything's, you've got to go through everything with a fine tooth comb to make sure they are safe. More than just a general car. 
so you could be buying a car that's been involved in an accident out more often than not and it's not it's been unrecorded or stolen or, and had damage and been repaired and you wouldn't even know. So it is important to make sure you buy the right cars. But these cars, I just see, I just seem to have so much trouble selling cars, especially categorized cars. And a lot of time people are investing in you rather than the car. I, I, I find when I've sold a car, people are uh, saying, God, you are really honest. And that's uh, really refreshing. Uh, and they, they, they buy in the car because of me, not because of the car. They've had people where they've compared one car is more or less identical to the other, but they've been put off because the person is really shady and not being really honest with them. As I, I just show it as it is. I show everything. I film everything on YouTube if they really wanted to see it. But that still isn't enough for some people. And they're just not interested. And I, I find there's a whole for a lot of people out there now doing categorized cars. And it's just, it just flooded the market and I find it really difficult to sell cars. Some people sell Fiestas all the time. Now I had a 2010 uh, Fiesta on, on the channel which you followed. I'd done that, that was great. Easy repair, nice car. I thought, oh, nice and easy to flip because other people can flip them. And they flip them quite quickly. I held on to that car and I ended up selling it. I think I, may, I might have broke even on that car, a Ford Fiesta z -Tech. I think it was 2010, but in my area, Fiesta's just, you can buy them anywhere and they're really cheap. So you've got to find what works well in your area and that, Fiesta's don't really work well in my area. Everyone hates a Fiat 500. To be honest, I had enough of them in the end because everyone does them. They're everywhere and they're guaranteed more often than not, they're all written off. So they flooded the market with them as well and it didn't go very down but well on my channel either. Uh, I've done about three, I think it's three Fiat 500s. No, four actually, I've done four Fiat 500s. And I, the, the hardest one I, I had to sell was the 2019 because it, it was past five grand. I think once you break that five grand bracket, you haven't got a chance in hell. Uh, and you've, you've really limited the market. People are really struggling with money and times have moved on, especially in the last year, I found that, uh, that everything is changing, especially in the UK, people are struggling with their money, they're holding on to their money more and they're not spending. Now, that's where my problem lies. This car is such a specialist car. It's a two litre turbo, 200 brake, 228 brake horsepower sports car really. And it's a luxury item that people are not gonna will pay 12 grand for because that's what I've got it up for, 11.999. And it's the cheapest one on Facebook and it still hasn't sold. So it's been on since May, I've slowly reduced the price uh, to a point that I can't reduce it anymore because it's just been ridiculous because I've been losing ridiculous amount of money on it. So I can't do that. So I'm stuck. Uh, and it's probably really demotivated as well. It's one of the things I would say, that's why I probably haven't been on. I've had a new job, obviously you know all this. I don't want to go back through what everything, but I've been working weekends more than doing time in the garage. Now, which is annoying is because I'm paying for this garage every week and it's just keeping it for storage for this car. Now, I honestly thought this car would go quickly. I paid over the odds for it and people, believe it or not, People are asking or offering eight grand for this car. Now, eight grand is probably where, it's not far off what I paid for it to repair it. So as you can imagine, that's how much is in this car. It's cost a hell of a lot to put back on the road. People are offering silly money for them. Now I'm stuck. So you've got to ask yourself what to do next. Now I could quite easily give up. You all know watching from previous videos I don't give up very easily I might have had a break but I'm definitely back and I'm gonna be back uh, better than ever uh, to win what I do best but we need to do it on a budget and this is where the channel is gonna change guys because I need to break away from salvage cars slightly I'm not saying I'm not gonna do one but we need to be really clever on what we buy from now on and I think you need to follow me with that process as well 
Now, all my savings are tied up in this car, so we obviously need to get something back. But luckily enough, where we are in this channel, I've already got two projects sitting there. One isn't mine, and to be fair, he's been really patient with me. He's been sat there since January, and I haven't really touched it. And that was the Peugeot 207 uh, convertible. If you remember, that was abandoned uh, in the garage for four years. We got it running, pulled it out. Uh, and it's, to be fair, it's a really, really good looking car. A bit of work, and we could probably flip that. And the, the, the owner has said that he's quite happy to sell it and we'll split the profit between us. I just, my work is trying to get it back on the road. Ideally, that was supposed to be for the summer. That's way gone now, guys. It's November. So that car's been sat there and I've moved. So uh, technically, it's abandoned again. So the Peugeot 207 convertible has been abandoned twice, guys. It's not a very good thing. And we've also, which I know a lot of people have been asking, the Transit uh, Mark 7 from the Marketplace. I bought that in January, guys. I had, a little, I had about two videos, three videos on it, and I sat still in the same place. I haven't touched anything, obviously because I need the room in the garage. Now, this car has been sat in the garage, just sitting here, and I'm thinking, what can I do? Now, hopefully, I've got an agreement in place with the owner of these garages and he's gonna hopefully make some room and this is gonna go into another garage out the way and free up some space in this one for us. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have to try and move this project out, bring one in and once I've finished doing whatever I need to do, get it back out and bring this back in to keep it safe. Obviously, I don't wanna be leaving this outside. It's a nice looking car and I know how secure this area is. It could still go missing. so. That's where we're at. So I haven't given up, it's just we need to be more clever on what we buy in. And I'm just putting it out there, guys, it's not easy doing what we do, uh, unless you can obviously flip cars and make money on them. That's the difference at the moment. I'm flipping cars and making a loss, which isn't, isn't good business sense, really. And that seems to be my luck over and over. Uh, I'm really grateful for all the support and every, everything that everyone has given me. And it still gives me motivation to carry on. Some people would quit now, uh, but like I said, my wife has been really supportive with me. We've got all our savings tied up in, these, in this project here now, and we really need to get some interest back in the channel. And hopefully, some people off the channel might be interested in this car. I also want to highlight something else as well. If you remember, uh, I was talking about the diagnostics equipment that I was given uh, a while back and a lot of people are saying that uh, yes they would love to have it well let me let me just go and get it if you remember this was uh, gifted to me and trialed and I had to review it and test it out it's a really good spec I've used it once or twice and back in the box now I was giving this away on the channel uh, but never got around to it guys and I was thinking of a way of how to try and give back to you lot because of all the support and to be fair you have supported me like I'm on 8,500 odd now subscribers which is unbelievable I never thought I'd, uh, I'd have that many subscribers but I am grateful for it so I want to show my appreciation to you but it means you have to do that a little bit more now I am going to give away this in my channel but it's when we reach 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, guys, make sure you do, so you've got a chance of winning this. It's gonna be free, sent out to you. We'll, we'll do something once we hit 10,000 subscribers, but it'll probably be in the comment section of one of my videos, and then I'll, I'll do a live, probably a live uh, draw on it. I think that'd be fun, because I really wanna start getting into this more and getting motivated again and you guys like i said have really helped me i want to give back to the channel and give back to you guys so 10,000 subscribers once we hit that this is going up in the competition guys so all you've got to do is probably comment in one of my videos and i'll do a live draw at the end so that is also coming to the channel comment below if you're happy for that you're probably wondering I'm just sitting here talking it's not very interesting for you guys so I'm going to give you a little update I really want to give you an update on what's going on where we're at and what's coming next to the channel 
I think that's best because it's been so long since I've done anything in the garage. Let's, up, let's refresh all of the, all your memories of what's going on and where we're at and what I've done. If you remember, in one of my videos, uh, the garage was full of all my stuff from the attic. I have now cleaned the garage, made clear everything from it. So I think this might work a little bit better. The only thing is I've like narrowed the garage slightly in length, but hopefully we can still get projects in here because it's still a bit of room. But I think this hopefully will work. Just don't forget we've got the generator so we can have a bit of lights in here, light in. Uh, as you can see the Audi S1 is sat here now. But we got room, still got plenty of room to work and everything is on the shelves ready to go I've sorted everything out and we just need to make a start so this is the Audi S1 project as you've seen let's, let's start it up I haven't started it up in a long time I do come up here just to uh, keep everything topped up so let's try this I haven't drove it, it's, it's sewn so it just sat in here doing nothing so it's still me just get in just want to show you it's got 56,000 miles 660 uh, sat nav it's got it's got everything on here guys you know you've seen the car so if anyone is interested in this car inbox me people have said do something with these tips clean them up guys like I said I've done so much to this car I've lost interest in it now I just want it gone so we can move on I was going to try and make it a little bit more sa saleable by changing the grill to a black grill but then I'm wasting more money on something that I just haven't got anything in I've got no money left to put in this car like I said we've used all our savings so I'm stuck at a point now that I can't really spend loads on a car. So that's the Audi S1. Updated. Still sat in the garage, waiting to go. The projects have been sat here since January. So all I've been doing is taking the batteries off, taking them home, charging them up. So yes, I still have the Transit and I still have the Peugeot convertible. Nice looking little car, and that's been abandoned again. This is going to be the next project because this this is this is going to the transit is a big job. You've got to do a lot on this engine, and it's not going to be, be able to be moved. So it needs to go in the garage. Hopefully, it'll fit, and we can work on the engine. It's going to come to the channel, guys. I really want to have a good go on this. I'm going to do things when it's parked here, but we are going to do loads of this. I've had another look under the bodywork of this van after going and doing a bit of research on it and it's it's a really solid van uh, the chassis legs are all nice and solid under the wheel arches are all solid where they normally rust it's got a bit of surface rust and um, if we can nip that in a bud now i think this would be a really good van and i don't know i would really really like to make it into like a day camper or something i, d I just don't know I really want to film as much as I can on this because I think it's, like I said, this cost me 900 quid at the time. It's run out of MOT in January. I, I do you know, I haven't even checked the MOT history on it now. I can't even remember what sort of things it would have failed on. But I think this would pass another MOT quite easily. Uh, I want to upgrade this grill. I want to do some modifications to it. I really want to do some things to this. I'm going to film everything as well, guys. So tell me what you think about that. I will start it up for you, it should start, now the batteries have been charged, but I'm going to go on to this for a minute and talk about this. Now I, I know guys it's a 207, it's not the most spectacular car, you know, okay it's not an M3 or anything like that, I would love, to get me wrong, I'd love to have an M3, but it's still a car, it's still a project, I'm still uploading. This is my uh, friend's car, he's asked me to repair it for him, it was abandoned for four years in the garage. Uh, I recently come around and had it, uh, put the battery on, pumped up the rear tyre because I was flat. I haven't moved it, but we've got some major problems with this car. Now it's been standing for so long and it's been standing out in the rain, which doesn't help. It needs a bit of bodywork to it. 
needs a good clean i'm not going to go overboard with it he's not he's already said he's he's not going to go overboard with it either we just want to try and get it up to a decent standard and flip it hopefully and i'll have a bit of money back and then we can finally work on this transit uh, what i want to do first is just start it up so you can have a listen and i want to show you the problems that come with this car we now we've been standing even longer Considering she's been standing, she did eventually fire up, but this battery we know is knackered. But you can tell it's definitely getting colder now because uh, that took a bit longer to start. She sounds really nice to be fair, but it has got a lot of issues. And being outside has really, really haven't helped the car. It's really sinking. Uh, it's developed a lot of mould. Let me just show you. Developed a lot of mold from being outside, so it needs a good clean. Look at that stinking, which we knew. We got a lot of errors, guys. It's got currently no brakes at all. You got to really pump them, so there's no brakes. Uh, there's no ABS, and there's no power steering. Now the ABS and power steering, I think, is a common fault with these cars. I think I know what it is. It's to do with the fuse box in underneath the engine in there so i'm gonna have a look at that but that's in a separate video so i just wanted to update you on this so we got deep pollution faulty so we got dpf or we got a lot of problems with this car it's because it's been sat guys it needs to be driven it's not smoking it's a nice little car Probably will need some sort of timing belt done on it. Good service, good clean. Yeah. So that's the Peugeot 207. That's the next project. Okay, I'm gonna leave that run. Who's up for the transit? Let's see if we can get this running, is it? Okay, same with this. I disconnected the battery. So it doesn't drain the power. So let's get this started. Glad I was gone green while it's been sat by the tree. But I think this has helped slightly because it's sheltering it from all the elements, but it, it's not doing any good sat around. Okay, let's try and, this is difficult to film guys because it's not a lot of room. Oh my God, it stinks in here now. I put the key in it, as you can see, Keep the battery off. It's just not, it's not to drain it completely. Okay. If you remember, this is done 135,000 miles. MOT run out, and the guy who was just selling it. What do you reckon? Do you reckon this will start? Oh, come on! Let's just check them in a minute, guys. I don't know what has happened guys, but it's got no power at all now. So I'm putting that on it. It's not coming up with any ignition lights at all. So it's blown some sort of fuse. Totally dead. Ah Got then. We will be working on this guys. I really want to get this running. I think I couldn't get that running for you. I wanted to do it. I want to pop the engine. I'll explain what I'm going to be doing to this. Okay. Now, I have tinkered with this slightly when I was off camera. Uh, I did clean all the sensors and just basically all the sensors, and they were caked. 
really thick. It did improve things slightly. I done um, a fuel injector reset on it with the four scan. Didn't really cure the problem. The end, the knocking on the engine seems to have quieted down quite a lot, but I definitely think there is um, a problem with the injectors. So what I'll be doing is I'll be taking off the injectors and sending them off for them to be checked first to make sure they're all working before I do anything else. Uh, once I've once they've come back and they've said, yep, they're fine, or one's knackered, we put them back in, try that, uh, and go from there. If the injectors are fine, then we know there's a problem, I would say, top end on this. Uh, the rockers, they call man, we had one slip, I'm going to replace you lot. And we basically are going to strip this engine and fix it, get it running decent. It's only done 135,000 miles. These, these go for 200. 200,000 plus if you look after them. This hasn't been looked after very well. It's got a silly problem and we can fix it. It's had oil leak. It had an oil leak coming from the injector seals and it's basically lost most of its oil through the top of there and just run down the front of the engine and just made everything run crap. I also believe the turbo is knackered. So we are going to replace our turbo as well because that's what's causing the smoke. Also a bad injector could cause that as well. So it's a few things I want to replace on it. As you can see, the chassis legs are all solid. There's no rust on there at all. We will be taking all this out. I'll be taking the front end off it so we can have a good look at it. Make sure everything is fine. And then working from there, we can flush all the fluids. We're just going to really go to town on this, and I think this is good content for the channel. And like I said, it's cheap content. It's not 11 grand, 12, 13 grand car sat in the garage. 900 quid, and we can plod along with this and get some really good content. And then we'll, in between doing this, I might pick up something cheap to flip. I, I just wanted to cut back in, guys. Uh, I fiddled, I fiddled around here, and it was loose earth or negative on the battery that's caused the problem and the van started straight up as you can see 135,000 miles on the clock and give a little taster of what she sounds like she's not that bad I've heard a lot worse in transit I can tell you but she's running she runs guys so I knew she I knew it was something silly. So they are the projects. Okay, so that's all the projects and what's been happening uh, in the world of re reviving salvage and what's uh, what's been happening with the channel. Guys, uh, I hope you uh, enjoy this little update. Like I said, I didn't want to make it too long-winded, but I've got to try and show you everything that's going on. Uh, people are asking what's happened to this project and that project. Now you know, you know what's going to happen with the channel. So moving forward, the next car in this garage is going to be that 207. We're going to get it in, do a bit of diagnostic work on it, find out why a lot of things are not working on it and go from there. Try and clear some of them codes. A lot of them codes are going to be there because it's flat. So we know that already. But the braking system, I think we know, or oh, I got a rough idea of what it could be. And hopefully it'll help you guys as well. Don't forget the 10K subscriber giveaway. It's going to be this Top Don, Top Don 600S. So, cracking little tool. You've seen me use it on the channel previously. 10,000 subscribers and this will be in the competition with the live draw, guys. Comment below what you think. Are you happy to see me back? Are you happy to know what's going on the channel? And comment below if anyone wants this car. I don't want to drag it out, but uh, I will see you all in a bit. Take care, guys. We started out on a Wednesday and I couldn't figure out why you would be mad at me. Who are you? You say it's nothing but a 